Welcome to session two of Understanding Curses. Let's begin from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your seed may live. Let's read that again. I call heaven and earth. Wow. To record this day against you. That I, this is the Lord speaking now. This is the Lord speaking. This is very important. That I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing therefore choose life that both you and your seed may live now this is a very important verse and this verse was one of those uh, verses that is smack in the in the in the message of Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight and onward the the whole messages of blessings and cursing. Now, one of the things that we must understand is this: God, in response to our disobedience in the Garden of Eden, initiated a curse. That's the first thing. God initiated the curse and that was in response to the disobedience of mankind Adam and Eve and subsequently every man and woman that was that were in their loins and so the whole issue of blessing and cursing is coming from God blessings because of obedience curses because of disobedience now God called a witness he called the witness of heaven heaven recorded now if you are able to number one disannul God's words and number two rewrite the record of heaven then you are free from Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. You are free from its law. You are free from its decree. You are free from its dictates. Now because we know that there is no man on the earth. And there is no angel in the heavens. That can disannul the words of God. Then we have to take note of what God has said in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 the record is written and it is held in the heavens and it has been decreed by god that there is a law that governs how a man will be cursed and how a man will be blessed when we talk about blessings and we talk about curses there is a prime law that governs everything. And that prime law says that if you obey God, you will be blessed. If you disobey him, you will be cursed. That's simply what the law is saying. And the record of that law, that decree, that dictate is held in the heavens. And it is witnessed by every creature that is in the heavens that means that the law of blessing and cursing is witnessed by the atmosphere number one because the atmosphere is heavenly it's in the heavens it's in the um first heavens it is witnessed by everything that flies in the atmosphere that includes the birds every flying creature so even the birds hmm? There are witnesses concerning blessings and curses. 
Then you move into the second heavens for the witness. You talk about the stars of the heavens, sun, moon, and stars, and galaxies. They are witnesses too. And then you move into the third heavens where you talk about the, the Godhead and the angelic beings. So we have three tiers of witnesses. The first heavens, the second heavens, and the third heavens. And so every time you talk about a blessing, every time you decree a blessing, or every time a curse is released, then guess what? The heavens begin to take record. And we have to deal with the records in the heavens if we are going to be dealing with curses. This is why for us to deal with curses, we have to take it to the courtroom of heaven. Because the record is held in the heavens. And for and, and any time a man is going to curse another man or a curse is pronounced, a courtroom situation is enacted. And so just like it is on the earth realm where you have levels of courts. So you might have a parish court. You might have, well, you might have a, 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 a what they call it now. I forgot what they call it, but you have different levels. You have like a, a parish court, then you have a supreme court. And then you have an appeal court. And then you probably have an, an external appellant court that, that you look to. There are about three levels of courts that we have in Jamaica. And each level of court is higher than the one below. And so, depending on where a curse has been issued from, no matter where it, is, it has been issued from, the record is held in the heavenlies. This is why, believers, you have to learn how... To access the courtroom of heaven. And you don't access the courtroom of heaven by your complaint. You don't access the courtroom of heaven by your frustration. You don't access the courtroom of heaven by your tears. Your tears, hear me? Your tears does not move the judge. Mm -mm. You must learn the law. What is the law? The law is the word. You must learn the law, the word. So in order for you to access the courtroom, you must learn the word and the principles of access, which is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without that, you're fighting a losing battle. Because the spirit realm works on the basis of laws, decrees, words, records. That's how the spirit realm works works now let me take you to zechariah chapter 5 we're just beginning this eh? zechariah chapter 5 now in zechariah chapter 5 it says then i turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked and behold a flying roll a flying roll that word roll there is the same word as volume or scroll or record and he said unto me what seest thou and i answered i see a flying roll the length thereof is 20 cubits, the breadth thereof 10 cubits. And then he said unto me, verse 3, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on the, this side according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off as unto that side according to it. And I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief. And into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house. And shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. Now I want you to understand something. This was um, specific as it relates to an issue. Now I want you to understand something about curses. Number one. Curses are in the heavenlies. They move in the heavenly realms. They are written on records. They have wings. They have dimensions, length, length, and breadth. Now, from Zechariah chapter 5, we are understanding that a curse moves about. It moves about. This is why you may leave a community, leave um, an area, and you might go to somewhere else, 
and the same problem follows you. Why? Because the curse can move. The curse has wings. It can move. And so, being able to move, it has length and breadth. It has dimensions. In other words, it, it, it has the capacity to cover certain areas of your life to certain degrees and to certain extents. And so this is why when a curse is released, individuals might not be able to move beyond a certain point in their life or achieve certain things in their life because the dimensionality of the curse spans a certain dimension, a certain breadth and length of your life. We can't take curses lightly. And whenever curses are uttered, you don't sit back and just relax. Because a curse, hear me now, a curse left unchallenged will be a curse that will grow. The opposite of a blessing is a curse. When God blesses you, he blesses you to multiply that blessing. He doesn't bless you so that the blessing remains static and stagnant. That's not God's blessing. God's blessing multiplies. A curse, on the other hand, multiplies itself, or let me use the word grow. It expands itself if the curse is left unchallenged. And this is why, brothers and sisters, some of us have it difficult because there have been curses that have been released against our ancestors, against our parents, against our foreparents, that have not been challenged. And so those curses, they grow. Now listen to what Deuteronomy 30 said. Go back to Deuteronomy 30. He said, the curse, if, if you allow it, it will go on you and your descendants. In other words, there is no stopping the curse from multiplying itself or expanding itself to your descendants if it is not challenged. That's the growth part of the curse. So it will go from generation to generation to generation until it is challenged and by the time a curse reaches you let's say it is coming from four generations back just imagine four generations of length and breadth that have been held captive by a word by a record by a decree and you now trying to progress where the curse has stopped that progressive uh, thing or nature in your family line. It is going to be difficult for you to move beyond it. You will struggle hard except you challenge that curse. Now let me, let me explain some things about challenging curses. Challenging curses are like arguing a case in a courtroom on earth. Let's say somebody, um, you have, somebody sues you to court. And you have to go to the first level of the court. And you did not get um, the, the, the justice you were looking for. You have to appeal that case to the next level of court. And if that court does not give you justice, you have to take it to the appellant court, to the highest level of court. And you can just imagine the amount of years that you have to be in the system until you get your justice. Now, in the spirit realm, because an issue has been there for generations, just merely praying about it will not stop it. I am not saying to you that your prayers are ineffective. Please understand. I believe in the power of God to do miracles. 
But based on what we have seen in our experiences in dealing with curses and curses that have been rooted in families, in communities, in nations, it takes time from the attack of that curse to the breaking of that curse to the new results that will come. It takes time. And this is where a lot of people become frustrated because when they start praying, they don't see results immediately. So they become frustrated that their prayers are not working. No, you can't be frustrated. You are dealing with three levels of atmosphere. You're dealing with your first level, the first heavens. You're dealing with the second heavens. You're dealing with the third heavens. And so you cannot be frustrated. You have to go at it, at it, at it. Because what you are doing, you are trying to revoke a decree, an incantation, a spell, something that has taken root in your life, in your family, in your bloodline, for generations, so that the reverse of that can happen to your children and your children's children and children's children. That is why it is so difficult for some of us. We are, listen to me, we Caribbean people, especially black Caribbean people and descendants of Africa, we are the fourth generation from slavery. We are the fourth generation from slavery. We stand in a very critical spiritual position right now. As we speak, the entire heavens, it is trembling. There is trouble in the heavens. Why? Because the Caribbean is now poised to be delivered from the tyranny of slavery. The colonial uh, 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 spirits of slavery. The economic bondages of slavery. The spiritual bondages of slavery. Both, both national and spiritual and religious. We stand at a critical point. And so our generation right now. The enemy is after this generation. Seriously. This is the generation that the devil wants to assassinate. Because this is the generation that stands to deliver the bloodline from the curses that have held it. And stand to now change the order for our descendants that are coming. And so the enemy is doing two things. One, he is... He's bringing confusion in the, in the spiritual uh, um, climate as it relates to deliverance. And so you realize that there's a lot of mumbo jumbo going on as it relates to deliverance in many of our churches. A lot of syncretism, a lot of infiltration taking place so that true deliverance will not come. And then he's attacking our generation, our seed, by allowing them to not know themselves. They don't know who they are. Today they are male, tomorrow they are female. The next day they are nothing. So the enemy is truly after what? Keeping the generation bound because the curse in our region is about to be broken. I just throw that in for you. Now, if we are going to deal with this whole issue of choosing, because God says choose life. If we are going to choose life, it means that automatically we have chosen the blessing. If we are going to choose life automatically, then what will happen is that we have a right to be blessed. And so, these rights come with certain responsibilities. There is no right 
without a responsibility. Every right has a responsibility. So what now becomes your responsibility if you have chosen life? Your responsibility then becomes to walk in the newness of life. To live in the newness of life. To walk in the spirit. Plain and simple to become obedient to God and his word. As simple as that. And so you cannot, brethren, be demanding blessing if you are walking in disobedience. It does not work. It does not work like that. Too many of us, we have been living in the disobedience, expecting to get the blessings of the obedience. No. You have to choose. You must make a choice. There is no gray area when it comes unto God. It's either black or white. It's either blessing or curse. It's either life or death. Make a choice. You have to make a choice. You can't be on the fence. You can't be just um, um, doing what you please. And think that, okay, what I have done, what I'm choosing is my right and God has to fit into my mold. No! God is no respecter of persons, my friends. And if you are going to enjoy his blessings, then walk and live according to how the, 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 the law of blessing demands that you live. And so we begin from there tonight. In understanding Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. That heaven and earth bears record. Heaven and earth bears record this day. Concerning the choice that you are going to make. Hallelujah. Now if you are a child of God. Blood washed, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on your mind and you're running for your life. If you're a child of God, then guess what? To live in the blessing is your right. And your responsibility to that right is to choose life and my responsibility as a shepherd as a prophet as whatever God calls me to be is to bless the obedient are you following what I'm saying to you it becomes my responsibility to release the blessing upon you. Where does it begin? It begins with a word spoken. So many of you have so many records of curses against you. That the little record of blessing that you have is minuscule. Compared to the records of curses that have piled up against you. Let's, let's look at it. Let me show you what you're dealing with. You are dealing with ancestral curses. You're dealing with the issues of your foreparents. That's one. Two. You are dealing with the issues of your nation. That includes your country overall. The community that you live in. You're dealing with that. Three. You're dealing with your own sins. That invoke curses against you. Then. You have to deal with the words of people. Whether carelessly. 
or deliberately. And so all of these records are piled up against you. Now, you say, but prophet, that's a lot. Of course it is. But how do we counter it? It is simple. Choose life. Come on. Choose life. If you choose life, then what will happen is that none of these things have a right to come against you. Absolutely none of these things have a right to come against you. The book of Proverbs says that a curse causeless shall not come. In other words, if I am living according to the responsibilities of life, then what will happen is that the shield of life will counter what the enemy is releasing against me. But because we are in a world that is evil, a world that has not yet been redeemed, we are fighting and struggling against issues, decrees, dictates, and records that are coming against our lives. But as long as you choose life, the blessing of God will overtake you. This is why I make it my responsibility to make sure that I bless you. So that there, is, there are enough records of blessings released upon your life to counter what has been said, what has been decreed, what has been released against your life do not practice to utter curses out of your mouth hear me there's another law that you need to understand whatsoever a man sow it that shall he also reap if you sow curses you go reap it if you sow blessings you go reap it Learn to bless with your mouth. Brothers and sisters, leaders in the body of Christ, hear me. Learn to bless with your mouth. Because whatsoever you sow, that you shall also reap. This is not a hidden law. This is written. My God. Help us tonight, Lord. There are various sources of a curse. My God, that was just the introduction. This is where we are starting. <laughs> Thank God. When the Holy Spirit shows up, He shows up to teach. There are various sources of a curse. Let's look at them. Number one, there is the demonic source. Number two, the human source. Number three, the divine source. Now, the demonic source are those that are invoked by evil spirits. Yes, demons do release curses. Satanic or demonic curses are those that have been spoken or invoked by evil spirits or agents who are possessed by evil spirits without the legal ground to do so why did i put in that legal ground business lamentations chapter 3 and verse 37 here is what it says who is it that has saith and it cometh to pass when the lord commanded it not let's read it in a different version ESV says, who has spoken and it came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it. 
In other words, there has to be legal, spiritual legal ground for a curse that has been uttered to take effect against you. Whenever these curses are pronounced by these evil spirits and these agents of darkness possessed by them, demons go into action against the individual or against the place where the curses have been spoken. Demonic spirits, they don't have anything to lose. That is why they try and make your life miserable. Because they have absolutely nothing to lose. And whenever these agents of darkness, they come into a place to release curses on individuals. They are releasing these curses with the intention that demons will hold you captive. This is a serious thing. This is why you don't take negative pronouncements lightly, especially if it is coming from agents of darkness. And when I say agents of darkness, you know who I'm talking about. Witches, wizards, warlocks, sorcerers, spirit mediums. You don't take these things lightly. Now, for the demon to do anything against you, that demon, hey Jesus, I'm going to say something that is very controversial. Demons seem to know the Bible better than we Christians. Because for them to, 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 to initiate a curse against you, they have to find, brothers and sisters, legal ground in the word. And if there is no legal ground in the word, they cannot invoke and initiate it against you and if they cannot find it against you they go into your bloodline they are they are, they are devious prosecutors they will fabricate things against you Just to inflict you with harm. That's why it's called slander. The second realm, so we have the demonic realm. The human realm. Now these curses are invoked against people's lives by other human beings because of, hear this now, jealousy, covetousness, and envy. Watch those three things. Jealousy, hmm? covetousness, and envy. Then we have things like anger. People are angry against you. Then we have things like revenge. People want to take vengeance against you for whatever reason. Whether they, and, 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 and because of offense. So we have jealousy, covetousness, envy, anger, revenge, and offense. Whenever these things are in the hearts of other human beings, they might very well utter words against you. They don't necessarily go to a shrine, go to an altar. Or go to use any candle or anything like that. If they go and do anything like that, they become agents of darkness. But some of them don't go to that length. They stand and they utter the word. Now because 
human beings have legal right in the earth realm to annul and to disannul, to bar and to allow, then whatsoever a human being speaks, it carries weight. So your life can be locked if another person speaks negatively against you in the ears of another. Let's say you are supposed to get a promotion. But somebody goes to the manager and speaks negatively in the manager's ears about you. Then what happens is that that negative word becomes a force that now begins to dictate and govern how the manager sees you. It could be because the person who did it was jealous, covetous, envious, angry, revengeful, or offended. And a lot of times, people's promotion, people's progress, are held back by people who speak negatively about them in the ears of others. That is a curse. Jealousy is when you see the progress and achievements of others and desire to have it. To, to achieve and progress yourself. Covetousness is desiring what the person have for yourself. You don't want them to have it. And envy is not wanting them to have it. Let me say it again. Jealousy is when you see the progress and achievement of others and desire to achieve and progress as well. Covetousness is desiring what the person has for yourself. And envy is not wanting them to have it. A threefold cord that is not quickly broken. And so human beings can utter curses to block you, to stop you. Don't ever say that the words of another human being does not carry weight. That's rubbish. Every word that comes out of your mouth carries weight. You are made in the image of God, whether you understand it or not. In other words, you have power to decree and power to disannul whatsoever you speak carries weight and so human beings can release curses against you then there is the divine aspect of curse does god release curses of course there are curses that are permitted by god three levels i bring them into one the God decreed curse, the number two, the angelic, and number three, the ministerial. Let me take them. Divine curses or spiritually authoritative curses are those that are directed, allowed, and permitted by God himself. Now, these come under these three categories. Number one, God decreed curse. A God decreed curse is one that has been pronounced directly by God for the breaking of his laws, his commandments, his principles of holiness, his righteousness. The Bible is filled with those things that will happen if we break the word of God. You know, it is very interesting that humanity's issues begun with a curse that's in the book of genesis i think chapter three there about where god spoke a curse to the man to the woman to the serpent and to the ground interestingly humanity's issues will end with a curse you say, where is that? In the book of Revelation. Let me find that verse quickly for you. That one just slipped me. Let me find it quickly. I think it's Revelation chapter 22, thereabout. Let me quickly find that. 
Yes, Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3. There shall be no more curse. But guess what? Cursed will be everyone whose names are not found in the book of life. It begins with a curse. It ends with a curse. What an interesting thing. Now, when we talk about divine curses, those that are permitted by God, angels also speak and can release curses. Angelic curses can occur when there is a clear violation of the word of God a perversion of God's word, God's holiness, and God's glory. We have seen angels in the scriptures turn up and release curses. Sodom and Gomorrah's situation was because of three angels. They came down and they released a curse upon Sodom and Gomorrah. They, they told Lot, do not look back. Mrs. Lot decided that she was going to look back. And she came under the curse. She turned a pillar of salt. She didn't, she didn't even get a burial. She just turned salt. Angels can release curses. A curse was released on Zechariah until John was born. Because he did not believe. But once we have, one thing we have learned is that angels do not curse at their own will. It is always in connection to what the assignment that God has sent them to do. And there are many other areas that we could look on. An angel came down and slaughtered thousands of men in Israel because of David's sin. Not David, sorry, because of what Saul did, sorry. And David had to go and offer a sacrifice for the angel to stop. It was in response to what God sent the angel to do. So if you want to stop an angelic curse, you have to appeal to God. Because they are God's servants. Then there is the ministerial curse. Which is made by ministers of God. Those who have the mantle of God upon them. Now this one is a whole session and a half by two in itself. Now ministerial curses are made by anointed ministers of God. And this can happen, one, if a direct instruction of God is given to the minister. Can pastors, prophets, apostles, can they release curses? Absolutely. They can be directed by God to do so. Number two, the minister comes under the inspiration of God. And it comes through the authority that the minister carries. And number three, the minister of God is doing so out of his own will, not sanctioned by God. And it carries the same effect. Why? Because he wears the mantle. So there are three ways that the minister can do that. Now, the minister becomes responsible. If God did not sanction him to do that, hey, he's in trouble. She's in trouble. Because when you take your case to court, the minister must give an account of himself as to what right and authority he used to utter that curse against you. And what I have seen over the years is that too many ministers have been releasing curses on people because they are either jealous, covetous, envious, angry, revengeful, or offended. You cannot 
release a curse under those circumstances. God will judge you severely for the things you say and do to his people. These days, ministers are behaving as if people belong to them. Mm -mm. You don't belong to me. You belong to Jesus. I am only an under-shepherd to Christ, keeping watch over your soul as long as Christ permits me. I have no authority nor do I derive any authority on my own. So whatever I do to you, I am answerable to the chief shepherd. And so if a man, if a minister curses you, you have a right to appeal the words to whom the chief shepherd in the courtroom of heaven. Are you following me saints? This is serious stuff. There is deeper levels to this thing. But I have to stop there in the interest of our time. Three sources of curses. The demonic. The human. And the divine. Now. The demonic and the human, you can deal with those on your own accord. Please understand what I'm saying. As long as you are walking with Christ, living for Christ, blood washed and Holy Ghost sanctified, you can deal with the demonic, you can deal with the human. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I condemn. I disannul every evil word that has been spoken against me. According to the word of the Lord, I am blessed and not cursed. I am the head and not the tail. That's where you deal with that. That's how you deal with that. But if it's divine, meaning that it has been sanctioned and permitted by God, you can't get up and say, I break curse and this and that. No. How you deal with that is through repentance. That's the only way you can deal with that. You cannot fly into the face of God. You cannot get angry with God. The only way you can deal with that is through repentance. Now, hear me. Learn this secret. Whenever a curse has been uttered against you from any realm, human, uh, demonic, or the divine, do not attack the curse first. Go into repentance. Come on, I'm saving you some time here. Go into repentance. Deal with your heart. Deal with your actions. Deal with your words. Go into repentance. When I see the blood... I will pass over you. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Remember, the devil is a legal strategist. It might not be something that you have done. But because you are connected to a bloodline, you become a liability. And you inherit things. So don't ever say that this shouldn't be against me. Forget that. Don't go that route. 
go into repentance. Personal repentance. Identificational repentance. I and my fathers have sinned. And I have come, Lord, to ask your forgiveness, to ask your mercy. I and my nation has sinned against you. And I come to ask your forgiveness. I come to ask your mercy. Are you following me, saints of God? Let me, let me go around the corner and come back. God is more interested in blessing a nation than destroying it. Let me say that again. God is more interested in blessing a nation than destroying that nation. If God wanted to destroy our nation, he would not send prophets. He would send angels. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let me repeat it. If God wanted to destroy your nation, he would not send prophets. Prophets in this room, hear me. Prophets anointed, prophets called, prophets in secret. Hear me very well. If God wanted to destroy a nation, he would not send prophets. But if he wanted to destroy the nation, he would send angels. The reason why the prophet comes is so that a window of opportunity can be given for repentance. And prophets, hear me. You don't determine that window. You speak the word and you allow the word to do its work in the timing that God has set it to work. You don't determine the window. Go and read the book of Jonah. Oftentimes, when God would send an angel, it is because the people have not heeded the warnings of the prophet. But the prophet will come first. And if God sends an angel, but did not send a prophet, what he will do is send the angel to a prophet so that the prophet can intercede. Now why am I going through this? These days, a lot of voices have come up uttering curses over nations. Oh, God is going to destroy you. God is going to send flood. God is going to send fire. God is going to send this. God is going to send that. And they are sitting down there waiting to see the volcano erupt. Waiting to see the tidal wave come in and wash away Kingston. Waiting to see the fire land in America. Just because they want to say, I told you so. But, come on somebody, type but. Type but. We're dealing with serious matters here. But. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. Hey, listen, there is a big but in the Bible. And if there are praying people in a land that truly cry out to God, even if it is one, God will turn away that destruction. God will turn it away. And 
as a child of God, you are the spiritual custodian of the spiritual atmosphere over your nation. You don't have to be a prophet to, 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 to be in that um, realm. As long as you're a child of God, as long as you can pray, as long as you understand the laws of blessing and cursing, as long as you understand how to traverse the atmosphere, the realms of the spirit and go into the courtroom of heaven, you have the power to negate negative decrees, evil words, curses that have been invoked, released, decreed over your land, over your family, over your life, over your property. Come on, you don't just sit down and do nothing. And this is why they will continue to look for the destruction of Jamaica. You know why? Because we have praying people in this land. We might have many things wrong. We might have many religious things going on that we don't like. But I guarantee you one thing. Jamaica has praying people. I don't know about any other country. I can't speak for any other. But let me speak for Jamaica. Jamaica has praying people. We do. And so when we hear curses coming up over the land, we have a right as prophets to deal with those words. We have a right to say, hey, no, it shall not happen. We have a right. Oh my God. Listen to me. You have no business uttering curses where you have not interceded. Before you utter a curse over somebody, go and pray for them. Jesus said, I say unto you, bless your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you and abuse you so that you can be children of your father. You have no right, you nor I, have no right to be uttering curses over people where we have not labored intently in prayer for them. Statements like make him die and go to hell ought not to come from your mouth as a child of God. To hell with him. Mm -mm. Do you know what hell is? Have you ever seen the flames of hell? Hell is so serious that God decided to die for us so that we don't go there. And he didn't die for the righteous. He died for the sinner. What right do I then have to curse a man? to hell, to death, to sorrow, to pain. I don't. It is better you commit such a person into the hand of God for judgment. Let him judge. These are serious matters. Let me quickly go through eight laws that govern curses number one there is a cause for every curse if a curse is going to land there is a cause for it proverbs 26 and verse 2 like a sparrow in its flitting that means in its flying like a swallow in its flying so a curse without cause does not alight there has to be a cause a reason why a curse will take root and so you 
don't deal with curse by attacking the curse. You deal with a curse by attacking the cause. Can I say that again? You don't deal with a curse by attacking the curse. You deal with a curse by attacking the cause. Did somebody catch that in their spirit tonight? You do not deal with a curse by attacking the curse. You deal with a curse by attacking the cause. Number two, sin is the gateway for a curse. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. Because you have done this, you are cursed. In other words, a curse must have a cause. Number three, a curse is a spiritual problem. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. What are you sowing in the spirit? What are the things that you are sowing in the spirit? Now, how do we sow in the spirit? Number one, your words. Number two, your actions. Number three, your emotions. Can I list them again? Number one, your words. Number two, your actions. Number three, your emotions. Those are three ways that you sow into the spirit. And whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So a curse is a spiritual problem. You don't deal with the effects of a curse by finding social solutions. You deal with the effects of a curse by finding spiritual solutions. So if there is a curse of poverty in your family, you can't break poverty by opening a business. You break poverty by applying spiritual laws. Come on, somebody. Because you can still open a business and you're poor as a church mouse. Number four, where sin remains, curses remain. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then... Will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will heal their land. Where sin remains, the curse remains. So how do we deal with the curse? We deal with the sin. Number five. The power of a curse is demonic. In other words, what is it that affects the curse? Genesis 4, verse 6 and 7. Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not well, sin is crouching at the door and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Demons thrive where sin is present. Demons get their greatest power where sin is the strongest. You want to weaken demonic spirits, remove the power of sin from your life. Master it. Number six, there is no remedy in the law for a curse. 
Galatians 3 verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continues not in all the things which are written in the book of the law to do them. If you say that you are going to keep the law, break one, you break all. If you say that you are going to do this and that according to the law to be blessed, you will do, 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 do. And nothing will happen for you. There is no remedy in the law for the curse. The only remedy is in the blood. Because only Jesus satisfied the requirements of the law. Number seven. Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hung it on a tree. In other words, hear me brethren. If we are going to be redeemed from any curse. We must bring Jesus on the scene in that area. What brings Jesus on the scene? It is not your shouting. It is not your stomping. It is not your moving your hands like it's a propeller. It's not running around the church. It's not kicking down the benches or giving the pastor a holy box underneath the anointment. It is obedience to the word of God. Submission to the spirit of God. And repentance through the blood of Christ. No other way. Number eight. Redemption must be appropriated. Matthew 26 verse 28. For this is the blood of my covenant. Which is poured out for many. For the forgiveness of sins. If you want the curse broken. Then you must appropriate the blood. In other words, apply the blood to that situation. How do you apply the blood? Repentance. After you have done repentance. Then you can now go into the rewriting of the record that was against you. You don't repent and leave the record book empty. A lot of persons, what they have done is to just repent, but they have not rewritten the record. You have to rewrite the record so that there is a new scroll that is overshadowing your life. So that wherever you go, that scroll is what will follow you. And follow your generation. We go back to what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 30. And verse 19. And what did the Bible say? I call heaven and earth. To record this day against you. That I have set before you life and death. Blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life. That you and your seed may live. Just as how curses are recorded in the heavens. So are blessings. And so don't just leave the record book empty. But write a new record. For your life. And how do you write this record? According to the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I will not sin against thee. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. If we want to see 
the blessings of God over our life, then we must begin to learn how to speak God's written record that has been held in the heavens and in the earth over our life. Tonight, by the grace of God, I pray for you that as you understand more and more how curses are operating, that you will enter into a new dimension in your life concerning the blessings of God. God bless you tonight and may you enter into a new realm of appropriating God's word over your life. Amen.